Excellent. Um, so I'll try and be uh, very brief. And um, <clears throat> Mahar, I, I do want to thank you. You asked us to read the, the preamble together. Um, and on Charter Day, to do that, um, <clears throat> I just wanted, there was one part that stood out to me, uh, which was to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of the human person. And I would ask all of us today, do our politics, do our discourse actually uphold that vision and values? To reaffirm fundamental human rights in the dignity and worth of the human person. That charter is our North Star. It has given us a very clear mandate for where we as humanity must go. And I'm here very briefly to offer a millennial perspective uh, on what we have seen and uh, really not just in words but in actions, what is already taking place. How many of you, by a show of hands if you're able, uh, are students or work with students? Okay. So for all of you, number one, thank you. Number two, the reality is you know, the, the majority of the students uh, who will be around in 2045 probably aren't even born yet. And so it is so important to have an intergenerational dialogue on, on where we take this work next. And so I just wanted to offer a very specific look at what Millennium Fellows are doing around the world. Um, because we've built a movement. It started when I was 19 years old coming into these spaces. Uh, but not just being inspired by the spaces, but the people. And so when I was 19, we started in our college dorm rooms, the Millennium Campus Network, MCN, to help undergraduates take action on the Millennium Development Goals, now the Sustainable Development Goals. And we've helped more than 6,000 young people have concrete impact on these goals. 75% of our alumni are now in social impact careers, making a difference. And last year, we launched the partnership with the United Nations Academic Impact. Um, and we launched it in presenting the Millennium Fellowship. So it's a leadership development program, and for all of you who are students or work with students, it's a platform to provide training, connections, credentials to undergraduates making a difference on the SDGs, on UN goals. And um, really, David, something you spoke about is that need for empathy. And so our core value is what we focus on instilling in these young leaders is a commitment to empathy humility, inclusion as guiding values in this work. And if we can layer on top of that a focus on technology for social impact, uh, that is incredibly powerful. And so we had 402 Millennium Fellows graduate the program last year. Young people at Alma College in Central Michigan tackling food insecurity through aquaponics farming. Young women at Afat University in Saudi Arabia uh, who noted that the field of cybersecurity is only 20% female, and so created a digital mentorship program to support young women going into the field. And if I could spotlight just three Millennium Fellows who stood out to us, <clears throat> who are leveraging technology to realize the SDGs. An issue very close to my heart, and I'm sure many of you, when I was in middle school, I remember viscerally being bullied. I remember that experience, uh, the words that were said, the derogatory language that was used. Well, today we're not just facing physical bullying, we're facing cyberbullying. It's an epidemic. And so Carissa Shaw, a young woman at, who's studying at the University of Pennsylvania, created an organization, Cyber Sensibility. Cyber Sensibility has created an experiential curriculum to help middle schoolers who are tackling cyberbullying. It's now being used by 1,200 middle schoolers across the United States. And with the power of this network, with the Millennium Fellowship, it's actually been adapted and localized. Adapted and localized in India and Nigeria. And so to just close with two other examples, one in India, uh, her colleagues who are localizing this curriculum also have their own initiatives. Nadim Mohammed Shah Jahan, uh, along with colleagues Sarath Shahji, has created Aggravator. And Aggravator uh, in India is focused on SDG 13. So it's working on countering two major threats agriculture faces today. The lack of rainfall and depleted underground water. And it's a project that uses advanced automated irrigation system to find the amount of water required for the plant using different parameters and execute it. This one project uses AI to predict the adequate amount of water supply that would be required to support optimal growth. 
That's a project that's benefiting 150 people today. Uh, and the last project I wanted to highlight, Philemon Kuza with the Opus Campus and Open Campus Initiative at the University of Ibadan in Nigeria. He identified a simple problem. Students are producing research papers in Nigeria and around the world. But a lot of times, those research papers, all that knowledge ends up sitting on a shelf. So what if you could create a digital platform so that students could access each other's research and draw upon it? What if you could build that community of practice? He's doing that at his university. 121 students are now involved in that project, have uploaded their research, and he wants to expand it across Nigeria. Those are just three of 402 Millennium Fellows who graduated the program last year. And we often overlook students. We write them off, we say, it's just one little small project, it doesn't really matter. Well, those 402 young people, those 402 Millennium Fellows, volunteered nearly 50,000 hours last year on 214 unique projects, positively impacting the lives of 393,449 people in 13 countries. All grassroots, local solutions, local response to the challenges they saw. This year, thanks to the United Nations Academic Impact, we've had over 7,000 applications from 850 campuses in 135 countries. That is a movement. That is what young people are doing. We don't have to sit around and ask ourselves, are young people stepping up to actually affirm the vision and values of the charter? They're doing that work. We all know that that's why we're here. And so I would just say, as a millennial, we have to tap into both our intellectual imagination but marry it with our moral imagination. Uh, really for restorative acts for humanity to make that charter real. And so what we're building with the Millennium Fellowship in proud partnership with the United Nations Academic Impact is a global community of practice to tackle, to take action, accelerate action, to make the SDGs reality. We'd be honored to collaborate with each and every one of you and really honored to be with you today. Thanks so much.